Thanks, Michelle. You're watching South East Today. Our top story tonight, the Sussex man who died in agony after a series of basic failings in his hospital care. And a former prison earmarked as housing for asylum seekers may only be used to detain illegal immigrants. Hello, we start tonight with the man who died in agony after what his daughter says was a catalogue of errors at one of our biggest hospitals. The Royal Sussex County has apologised to the family of Leslie Boatfield and say they've changed their procedures because of the failings in his care. Leslie was dying with bowel cancer when he was admitted last summer, but a series of mistakes led to him being discharged with no pain relief. Here's our health correspondent, Mark Norman. It's upsetting. It is. A year after her father Leslie died and Shirley is still struggling emotionally. I'll never get out of my head him just saying no more, no more. And he actually said, how can a human body carry on in this much pain? Her emotions made worse by the poor care Leslie received in his final few days at the Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton and the Trust's subsequent response to her concerns. It took them a year to write a letter of apology and in that letter, they appeared not to know Leslie had died 12 months earlier. It was just a catalogue of errors and people not doing things. People didn't do his obs. I mean, I've been told since that you should have quarter, 15 minute, 30 minute obs. We were lucky if it was done every two hours. I was going to the nurses station saying how my father was in pain. Um, oh wait, we'll get round to you even to the extent when my dad needed cleaning up, I had to go and call people and ask them. They weren't checking on him. In a statement, the Trust said to us, we are deeply sorry about the care that Leslie received during his admission to the emergency department. We know this caused significant distress to him and his family during his final days, which we know will stay with the family forever. We're also sorry that our letter to the family included such an upsetting mistake. This should not have happened, and we deeply regret the impact this has had on the family. They went on to say, Leslie's experience has changed the way our emergency departments care for patients who are nearing the end of life to ensure they receive the care and dignity they deserve. But that is not good enough for charities working with grieving families. If that communication is something that actually causes upset and maybe even trauma, um, that can obviously affect that family going forward. So we have to get it right. We call it one chance. Shirley is not seeking compensation. She simply wants the staff at the hospital to improve the care they offer patients like her father. Their response letter came the, well, the other week and it wished him all the best for his future care when they know he's passed away. They just don't seem to read anything, they don't seem to take notice of anything, and they don't seem to care. Our health correspondent Mark Norman reporting. A former prison earmarked for housing asylum seekers will now only securely hold those who are awaiting deportation. The North Eye site near Bex Hill had been the subject of local protests against the original plan. Now local MP Hugh Merriman has confirmed it will only be a closed site for those who have arrived here illegally. He also said local jobs could be created as the buildings have to be rebuilt. An inquest has heard that a security guard from Sussex who was jailed for stabbing 16 cats died of COVID-19. Stephen Bouquet, who was nicknamed the Brighton Cat Killer, was jailed in 2021 for killing nine cats and injuring seven more. Today, the inquest in Maidstone heard Bouquet died on his 55th birthday in hospital. He was receiving care for thyroid cancer while serving his sentence. A crackdown on retailers illegally selling vaping products to teenagers is being planned by Kent County Council. Shopkeepers who persistently ignore the law are being warned that they will face legal action. Last month, the council also urged a complete ban on the sale of disposable e-cigarettes across the country. The East Surrey MP has been appointed the new Secretary for Energy Security and Net Zero, becoming the youngest member of the Cabinet. Claire Coutinho is being promoted less than four years after she was elected to Parliament. She was previously an advisor to Rishi Sunak in the Treasury and moves into her new job after 11 months as a junior education minister. 
Football now and the Spain forward Ansu Fati is set to complete a surprise season-long loan move to Brighton from Barcelona. Fati has fallen down the pecking order at Barcelona who need to create some space in their squad to sign Manchester City fullback Joao Cancelo on loan. He's widely viewed as one of the most promising young players in the game. Meanwhile, the Seagulls captain Lewis Dunk has been named in the latest England squad. The 31-year-old was included earlier this summer but had to pull out due to injury. Next Next month, the three Lions face Ukraine in a Euro 2024 qualifier and Scotland in a friendly. Finally, when the moon catches your eye, you may be seeing a rare spectacle. A blue supermoon made its first appearance in 14 years last night, occurring when the pattern of days in a year means there are 13 full moons instead of 12. The next time you'll see this in the sky is in 2037. Thanks to all your incredible pictures, you can see more on our website. Time now for a look at the southeast weather. Here's John Hammond. Hi there. Well, after a rather drab end to August, there are reasons for optimism as we head into September. There might still be a bit of dampness in the air. First thing in the morning, a lot of low cloud around, quite a muggy start, but that cloud will thin and break. It'll brighten up nicely. And um, bar the odd shower, I think there'll be a lot of sunny weather through tomorrow afternoon and temperatures bouncing back after today's disappointment up into the low 20s. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? And there are reasons to be cheerful as we head into the weekend as well. Fine, settled theme on Saturday. A little bit of fair weather cloud, but I think by the odd very isolated shower, it should be dry. Temperatures again heading in the right direction. Plenty more of that to come as we go through Sunday and into the early part of next week. Drier, brighter, warmer. Excellent. That's what we liked here. Thank you, John. That is it from me and the late team for this evening. Juliet Parkin, though, will be back with all your breakfast news from 6.30. Good night.